Let's help to do the post-order traversal of a binary tree iteratively using two stacks. Let's start with an example that demonstrates the process of how to do this. So here we have a simple binary tree and we have two stacks, one of which is called result stack. And this result stack will in the end have all the nodes in such a way that if we pop them and visit them, the result will be a post order traversal. So let's see how to actually populate it. We begin with the root node one and we will add it to the first stack. Then we go to the stack and we set the current node to the top of the stack. So the top of the stack is one, so we said this is current. We pop it and we add it to the result stack. Then we check, does it have a left child? And if it does, we're gonna push it to the first stack. And then we check, does it have a right child? And if it does, we push it again to the first stack. Once we've done that, we go again to the first stack and we're gonna set current to the top of the stack. So three. We will pop the three and we're gonna push it to the result stack. Then again, we check, does it have a left child? No, it doesn't. Does it have a right child? It does. So we're gonna push it to the first stack. And once we're done with the three, we go back to the first stack and we set current node to the top of this first stack, which is six. We will pop it from the first stack and push it to the result stack. Then we check, does it have a left child? Yes, it does. So we're gonna push it to the first stack. And we check, does it have a right child? No, it doesn't. So we're done with the six. We go back to the first stack and we're gonna set current to the top of the stack, which is seven. We will pop it from the first stack and push it to the result stack. And we check, does it have a left child? No, it doesn't. Does it have a right child? No, it doesn't. So we're done with the seven. We go back to the first stack and we set current to the top of the stack, which is two. We pop it from the first stack and we push it to the result stack. Then we check, does it have a left child? Yes, it does. So we push it to the first stack. And we also check, does it have a right child? So it does. We're gonna push it to the first stack. We go back to the first stack and we set current to the top of the stack, which is five. We pop it from the first stack and push it to the result stack. And we check, does it have a left child? No, it doesn't. Does it have a right child? No, it doesn't. So we're done with the five. We go back to the first stack and we set current to the top of the stack, which is four. We pop this from the first stack and we push it to the result stack. Then we check, does it have a left child? No, it doesn't. Does it have a right child? No, it doesn't. So we go back to the first stack, but this time the stack is empty. So this indicates that we're done. So once we populated the result stack, the last step is to actually pop the value and visit them. So in this case, we're just gonna print them. We begin with four, so we print the four, we pop it, we print the five, we pop it, we print the two, we pop it, we print the seven, pop it, six, three, and one. So the final output is four, five, two, seven, six, three, one, which indeed is the post order traversal of the simple tree. Let's see how to actually implement this. So we'll have a function called post order, which takes address to the root node and we will return nothing. 
The first thing we want to do is to check if the root node is null because that indicates that the tree is empty, so there is nothing to traverse. If root is not null, then we will initialize the two stocks. We will call the first stock st and the result stock result. Then we push the root node to the first stock. And at this point, while the stock, first stock is not empty, we set current node to the top of the stock. And then we're going to pop the stock. Then we're going to push current to the result stock. Then we're going to check, does current have a left child? And if it does, we're going to push it to the, to the first stack. So if current left is different from null, then we push it to the first stack. So stack that push current left. We do the same thing for the right side. So if current right is different from null, Then we push it to the stack. And that's it for the first while loop. So when this while loop exits, which it does when the first stack becomes empty, as we saw, the result stack needs to be popped and the value needs to be printed as we're popping them. So we're just going to do this in a simple while loop. So while the result stack is not empty, We first print what's on top and then we pop it. And that's it. Let's quickly run through this uh, function to demonstrate that it actually works. So we have again the same simple tree we had before. We have the two stocks, st and result. So we begin by passing uh, a root one to this function post order. So we check is root null, root is not null. So we initialize the two stocks, st and result, and then we push to st root, so one. And while stock is not while st is not empty, we set current node to the top of the stock, which is one. We pop it and we push to the result stock current. So current is one, we push it. Then we check if current left is different from null, the left of one is two and it is different from null, we push to st current left. So we push two. Then we check is this current right different from null? The right of one is three, which is different from null, so we push it to stack. We go back to the condition, stack is not empty, we set current to the top of the stack, which is three. We pop the stack, and to the result stack, we push current, which is three. Then we check if current left is different from null, the left of three is null, so we don't do anything here. We go ahead and check is the right different from null, the right of three is six, so it's different from null, so we're gonna push it to stack. We go back to the condition, stack is not empty, we're going to set current to the top of the stack, 6. We will pop stack and push to the result current, which is 6. Then we check if current left is different from null, the left of 6 is different from null. We push it to the stack, so the left of 6 is 7, we push it to the stack. Then we check, is the right different from null? The right of 6 is null, so we don't do anything. We go back to the condition, stack is not empty, we set current to the top of the stack. We pop the stack, 
we push it to the result stack and we check is the left different from null the left of 7 is null so we don't do anything is the right different from null the right of 7 is also null so we don't do anything we go back to the condition stack is not empty we set current to the top of the stack which is 2 we pop the stack and we push to the result stack current then we check is current left different from null the left of 2 is 4 so it's different from null we're going to push it to stack then the right of current is also different from null because it's 5 so we're going to push it to the stack we go back to the condition we set current to the top of the stack which is 5 we pop it from the stack we push it to the result stack and we check does it have a left no it doesn't does it have a right no it doesn't we go back to the condition we're going to set current to the top of the stack which is 4 we pop the stack we push to the result stack current which is 4 and then we check is current left different from null the left of 4 is null so we don't do anything is current right different from null the, the right of 4 is null so we don't do anything we go back to the condition this time stack is empty so we don't enter the loop we exit this while loop and we go now to the second while loop so while the result is not empty we're going to access the top which is 4 so the value so this is the address to node error value so it's going to be the 4 and we print it then we pop result again it's not empty we print what's on top and we pop it not empty print what's on top and pop it not empty print what's on top 7 and pop it again not empty we print what's on top and pop it so again not empty print what's on top pop it print what's on top and pop it at that point result is empty so we exit this while loop and we exit the function so we're done so the output is four five two seven six three one so which is correct what is the time complexity the initial part here we do some cost amount of work then we enter this while loop so how much work we do with this while loop every single iteration of the loop we're going to push a node to the result stack and we know that we do this once for every single node so this while loop will run n times where n is the size of the tree and if you look carefully at the body of the loop the work that we do inside is constant so the total work associated with this while loop is O of n the second while loop will also run n times because the result will have all the n nodes and we're gonna print it and pop it and print and pop and so on and this is constant amount of work done n times so the work associated with the second while loop is also O of n so the total uh, work associated with this function is O of n so we can say that the time complexity is O of n what about the space complexity it will depend on the size that the first stack will reach and the size that the second stack will reach we know that initially a node is not in any of the two stacks then a node is pushed to the first stack and then when it's popped it's finally pushed to the result stack so a node at any point in time is either in none of the two stacks or in the first stack or in the second stack the worst case happens when every single node is in one of the two stacks which for example happens when all of the nodes are in the result stack and therefore the maximum number of nodes that will be in both of the stacks at the same time is simply n and so we can say that the space complexity is O of n you can find the link to the code in the description below